Oh gosh. Today we're out here at Wheeler. There's Luke looking under a log for some salamanders. We got a new camera out here. I'm gonna make a video on identifying invasives during wintertime. Check this out. Sony A7 S3 and uh, hoping it's gonna do a good job for us. All right, this is one of my least favorites. This is Nandinia, and you still see this planted in a lot of people's landscaping. Uh, it was in my landscaping uh, when I bought my house, and I've been trying to kill it for years. But this is introduced in the early 1800s in North America from Asia, um, and it spreads rapidly. Um, we're probably a good mile from any residential housing, and it's out here on this public land everywhere. Uh, it spreads, birds spread it real bad, um, but one of my least favorites, but it's easily identifiable in the wintertime because of these red berries. A lot of times it has red berries and it's green, uh, green leaves. It's not, uh, it's not really deciduous. This thing seems to hold on its leaves and be an evergreen uh, through most of the year. So easy to identify. But yeah, this has absolutely zero value to wildlife or humans. It's actually poisonous to humans and pets and wildlife. Um, really, really bad one. I hate this stuff. And, uh, you see it just about everywhere because people use it in their landscaping. And I just want to make clear, I'm not saying go out to your public lands that are being overran with invasives and treat these with herbicide and kill them as you're hiking along the trail. That would be really irresponsible. For one, you probably don't even know how to identify these species. So this is how you identify Mahonia. This is Mahonia, also known as Oregon grape. It's got these thorny leaves, almost like holly. But you see how they're branching out and they, their stems are kind of, they're compound leaves more so than, uh, than singular leaves. So that right there is one whole leaf. You can see that where it came off the stem. That's one leaf. And so this is Mahonia, really easy to identify and uh, used in landscaping a ton. I think this originated in Africa. Here's another nasty one that was introduced by homeowners uh, used in the residential landscaping. This is thorny olive. Uh, it's a species of Iliagnus, uh, kind of like autumn olive. And it's easy to ident identify this time of year because it's got the green leaves, obviously. But you look on the underside, these leaves are silver. And we actually have some native species uh, that are silver on the bottom. One of them is almost uh, an endemic to Alabama, Alabama croton, which this, or croton, this time of year, uh, Alabama croton would have orange leaves and they would have fallen off by now, but the underside is even more silver than this uh, thorny olive is. But this is one that's now out here on public land in our wild places because we planted it in our landscaping and it escaped. All right, so here's another one that has escaped cultivation. This is monkey grass and uh, just carpeted. It's carpeted this whole roadside here. And uh, there's other natives in here like or there are natives in here like river oats that should be growing here instead of this monkey grass and so these are displacing native species and you know even if they aren't causing harm killing animals they're filling a void or they're filling a place that shouldn't be a void it should be a native species growing there so they're out competing natives and that's why we should be planting natives in our landscaping. So this is English ivy. This is one that stays green in the winter. This is one that's still being sold in stores right now in landscaping uh, garden centers. And uh, it'll kill mature trees. It'll also be a ground cover. This stuff is nasty. Uh, it's a really bad one. So several years after trees fall down and it comes back in privet and invasives, this is what it's gonna look like. And this is only gonna get worse as these get taller this privet is gonna overcrowd, shade out anything underneath it. It's gonna be bare, just bare dirt, nothing, nothing for wildlife underneath. And this wildlife refuge management area will now have areas that aren't providing anything for wildlife that are gonna be the lowest quality habitat they could possibly be. And this could be avoided if there was fire here. If there's fire coming through, it would knock back this privet and keep it from turning into a thicket like this one is gonna turn into. So here's the benefit of these invasives having green leaves during the winter time and most of our native shrubs not having their leaves in the winter time. 
you can foliar treat this with herbicide, which means foliar treat means that when you spray it, it has to have green leaves to kill that plant. If the tree does not have green leaves on it, it's not gonna affect it. So if you use a foliar herbicide to broadcast spray all of this right now, this time of year, you're gonna get a really good kill on the, this privet or any of these invasives and it's not gonna affect any of the native ones that are dormant. So say there is some Chickasaw plum or American plum in here, They're, they have already dropped their leaves. So if you spray it, those aren't gonna be affected. It's only gonna kill your targeted species. So it, it's actually makes it really easy to get rid of some of these. So there's not really an excuse, especially where it's easy to reach. You can ride by here on a tractor or side by side and spray this and kill it. It would take you less than an hour and you might do that once every year. And before long, you've made a big dent on controlling these invasives. So every year you let this one privet shrub live, this is how many more seeds are being introduced to the seed bank around here. And uh, one thing that pretty much all these invasives that we've showed today have in common is they're extremely fire intolerant. So if there was fire still present on this landscape, these it would kill most of these, at least top kill most of these invasives and give some of our natives a fighting chance. And so uh, that's just uh, something to think about when managing our, uh, our wild areas is fire is gonna be your friend. There are actually natives that are green this time of year as well. This is crane fly orchid. Um, next to it, we've got some strawberry bush that still has green leaves. This is a good one. We've got some green briar that has green leaves right now as well. Uh, so not everything that has green leaves right now is invasive, but it is easy to identify a lot of the invasives. This one is invasive. This is Japanese honeysuckle right here that still has green leaves this time of year. But um, So don't kill everything that has green leaves. This is another one that's going to catch your attention in the wintertime. This is actually a native. It's just native further south. Uh, this would have not been found naturally here in North Alabama. This is Southern Magnolia. And the reason it's here is because it's escaped somebody's yard and is now out here in the wild. Even though it's a native, this is not the part of the state it should be in. The old saying is, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? If a tree falls in the woods, the real question is, is it coming back in native species? Oh, I just yawned and my eyes were watering. To f little, little, little. All right, let me redo that. I like the energy. I like the energy. I feel like the energy's right, maybe. Is it? Yeah. This is Joe Exotic, and I'm out here. To... You want to delete that, or you want me to just keep...